John? I hear beeps. It's Morse code. John? Hello? Hello. Hey, Hello. you're on the air. Hey, how you, oh, great. How you doing? <laughs> okay. We heard you <laughs> using a microwave or dialing a phone or something. Yeah, sorry about that. That's I, okay. You didn't warn me or I would have stayed away from the microwave. We like to surprise people. So, yeah, the, the reason I called that, I'm sure you got your old notes in front of you, but uh, I'm in the military. I have been for uh, 18 years. Mm -hmm. Actually, I uh, just hit my 18-year mark. Congratulations, uh, and thank you for your service as a as another former service person. Uh, I can appreciate 18 years. That's longer than I made it. Well, I because you're a prior service person, I kind of do it for you, but I really do it for uh, for for the guys that are in. I'm yeah. not a patriot, I am, and this is something that bothers a lot of people, but I do it because, like, 18-year-old kids, our lives are in danger, and I want to help. That's a good reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Seems like a good enough reason for me. I mean, anyway, so basically my experience was this. I've been in for 18 years. I've been promoted, you know, many times. I've, I've been very successful in the military. I have no complaints in that, in that area. But I was talking to my commander in his office with the door closed, and he, normally I just don't talk about religion because you're not supposed to in the military. It's, you know, it's contrary to order and discipline and morale and cohesion and all those things. But he, for some reason, decided to just openly and directly ask me, do I believe in God? And I said, well, no. No, I don't. And he said, well, you know, you're lucky you've gotten promoted as much as you have. You're lucky you're still in the military. If it had been up to me, I wouldn't have promoted you. I would have thrown you out of the military. Which is why they don't let you talk about it, <laughs> I'm sure. Well, no, wow. the reason, really the reason they don't want to talk about it is because, you know, obviously any differing religious beliefs can become contentious. Yes. And if you've got to put, if you, if you've got to put your life in somebody else's hands, or they have to put their life in yours, you really don't want to chip away at that and, and, you know, be left wondering, you know, can I trust this guy at all? You know, just because you started talking about religion. I'm amazed I mean, that he said he would have discharged you had he known. Yeah, that's obscene. I mean, first of all, he has to know that he pretty much can't do that as the actual reason. Yes, and that's what I, you know, in the military, if a guy outranks you, he can just order you to shut up. So, I knew I only had seconds to make that point before, you know, he got offended and I was ordered to shut up. So what I said is, you know, sir, I, and it was snide because everybody's heard this thing a million times, but I really wanted to get at him because I was really offended. And not just offended personally, but offended professionally because I Absolutely. agree with, you know, the separation of, you know, religious beliefs and professional, you know, being a professional service member. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I said, sir, I, I said, I, while I disagree with your statement, I will defend to the death your right to say it. Yep. Because I, I took a solemn vow for that. Do, were you absolved of that, dog? <laughs> they, made, they made me vow when I joined. <clears throat> and, of course, he blew up and yelled and screamed and all that. But I think, you know, his anger actually made me feel better because it meant that I had gotten through to him on some level that what he was doing was inappropriate. Yeah, I think I would, I think I would have pointed out that, uh, you know, when I was sworn in, I was offered the opportunity to swear or affirm. I didn't have to pledge anything to God. Uh, right, but I did affirm that I was sworn to defend the Constitution. Absolutely. And the Constitution guarantees that, yep. uh, that I can believe or not believe whatever I want. I just have to do my job. Yep. Um, and he went on to say that you know, with my lack of faith that I couldn't possibly be an effective combat leader, uh, you know, all this stuff where, you know, he, he was so wrapped into his value system that he couldn't see any other way they could possibly work. Much like a person that can't accept evolution because they've got too much emotionally invested in Genesis. Because mm -hmm. I hear that Genesis might not be in sequence. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Touche. Anyway. And what I told him is, you know, sir, I, <laughs> and basically, my, you know, my belief is that being an atheist and in many ways might make you a more effective soldier in combat when you're getting shot at because that moment where many people would stop and huddle down and pray and hope the things would work out, I don't believe in prayer. I don't believe there's anybody that's going to help me 
except me and the other people that are around me with guns. So. Yeah, and uh, I'd rather they weren't praying either, but I, I, I have to let them. Yeah. You're, you, so you're, you're, you're wholly and solely responsible for the outcome of, you know, whatever situation you find yourself in. I mean, I've been blown up. I've got, you know, I don't have shrapnel in my leg, but I did. It's gone. Um, you know, I've experienced some bad stuff. And at no point did I think to myself, you know, boy, I sure wish God would come down and intervene and protect me from the, you know, from the, the bullets or whatever. <laughs> You're yeah, probably you know. too busy trying to survive. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a testable claim. We can test combat efficiency and readiness with and without prayer to find out which one's actually more effective. Yeah, that actually could be scientifically tested. I, I don't think, I think it'd be kind of hard to get, uh, get because most military people are religious, as I'm sure you're aware. Oh, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, that is something that could be tested. You know, let's... Uh, you know, I, like I, place that, when I was in Afghanistan the last time, I've been to Iraq twice, I've been to Afghanistan twice. Um, the last time that I uh, went there, pretty much every Saturday for the first couple of months, we'd get, we'd get rocketed. Um, and, uh, you know, you could have just divided people up into two groups and had, you know, people over here praying, people over here, like, you know, taking cover and, see, and you know, see whether... There's any uh, difference in the incidence of injuries as a result of flying shrapnel and, you know, rapid changes in barometric pressure and all that stuff. Unfortunately, I don't think we have to test it at all. I think you can just say that every second spent not focused on the task automatically qualifies as inefficiency and unreadiness. So. Yeah, and that's my contention, and that's, that's why I feel so strongly about this. I mean, apart from the constitutionality of it, which I do deeply believe in, and, and you know, I'm very invested in um so are you putting in for a transfer oh uh, i could i suppose i could um i think that that would uh in terms of my personal experience that would do more harm than good if i were going to do anything um I would allege uh, you know it would be an allegation because it's just me talking but i would allege that he actually told me these things and claimed that he's prejudiced and unprofessional and, and try to get him to go to court martial. Odds are I will not do that because ultimately it's my word against his. Yeah. And there's really no point. So, you know, I tried to make the conversation brief and as civil as it could be, consider, you know, considering the, uh, the subject matter. But honestly, there's, and that, you know, it's frustrating, but there's really no point in trying to fight back. Like that. I was watching one of your old shows. I only recently found out about your show, but that litigious idiot that wanted to sue Kirk Cameron or something for the uh, April Fool's Day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing I said on that is he missed the whole point is that he wanted to attack free speech, and if atheism is ever going to become a socially acceptable uh, belief system, well, it's not a belief system, but, you know, other people view it as a belief system. If it's ever sure. going to be socially accepted, it's going to be because people take seriously our First Amendment rights. And on that note, i got to let you go because we've completely run out of time. Oh. Thanks so much for calling in. Thank you so much. Sure. I appreciate it. I love the show.